here we have two micro steps. They are both being clocked by a elf LFO and the output of that is going to a buff malt so that we can split the clock into two separate signals. Um, so you can see these two micro steps are in sync, but their start points are not synchronized. So to fix this, you could use the reset jacks and have a pulse go there to uh, make sure that their start points are the same. But I found this uh, annoying sometimes to have to patch stuff just to get everything in sync. Um, so we're gonna look at some of the new version two features. So first of all, this last button here, it used to just go to the erase steps um, function. If I hold this now, uh, I see a whole bunch of other LEDs lit up now, which to indicate some of the other new utility functions. The very top is the manual reset. So I'm gonna go to the other micro step and do the same and both press these. And now you can see that both are in sync now with the same start points. So let's go back to the menu and look at some of the other things. These next four steps can be used for clock divider mode. So this first position is for divide by one. So for every clock pulse, you get um, one advancement in step position. If I go to divide by two now, you can see it takes two clock pulses to move by one. So now um, the other micro step here is moving twice as fast relative to this one, or you could say it's twice as slow. You go back and we have divide by four and the last one is divide by six. Divide by six can be useful if you have, um, uh, let's say MIDI 24 pulse per quarter notes and you want to divide that down so that you can get 16ths. Okay, so we're going to go back to one step or uh, one clock division and this next one here with the single green LED, um, you can press that to do nothing. So basically if you go into this mode and you don't want to choose a function, just press that and you can exit without deleting anything or changing. After that, we have the two erase functions. And before this erase here would erase all the steps you programmed, but leave the settings such as gate length, um, pattern length, shuffle amount, stuff like that. This other reset leaves the steps, but deletes all those settings. So you have a choice of two things that you can delete. Um, you could delete everything if you go through and do both. So right now we're gonna exit without doing anything. And we come to our eight step sequence. So right now the outputs are connected to um, Dofer or Quad ADSR. The reason why it's nice to use a ADSR envelope or you could use a, a math as well is that you want something where the gate length is going to have an effect on the envelope produced. Um, since the micro step does really interesting things with uh, gate length, especially once you start playing with shuffle, you want something to take advantage of this so that if you are using this to modulate anything from uh, just a simple VCA opening up to uh, frequency modulation um, or uh, yeah, of, of, of an oscillator or something like that. By having changing gate lengths, you're gonna get changing sounds, which is gonna sound more interesting. So right now, um, the output of this is going to QMMG in VCA mode. And we've got a Hertz donut uh, feeding audio to the QMMG. So I'm just gonna do a single pulse. Okay, so we just hear a simple sequence. Um, the other envelope output is going to the um, modulator oscillator's pitch. So now if I put a green step, which is a step from sequence two, you can hear that it's changing the way that the primary oscillator sounds. So we get a kind of interesting sound. Okay, and so just a little demo, of if you change the uh, gate length, what happens? So right now we're at a long gate length. Okay, I'll try it with the green. I'll do a short one too. Now let's add some shuffle. Actually, it has a bunch of shuffle already, so we're gonna take the shuffle off. And we'll just put a little bit on. Okay, 
Okay, so that is basic eight step mode. Let's erase this pattern. Okay, so now we are um, back to a blank canvas, you could say. Um, and we are going to now move into 16 step mode, which is a much requested feature. So uh, if I hold down this last button again, but for more than two seconds, it's just going to eventually exit the, it'll enter the uh, utility menu and then it'll eventually exit and just go right back to uh, um, the sequence programming mode. And you'll see right now that things have changed. So actually I'm going to put both of these micro steps in sync again so you can see what's going on. Okay, so the one on the right is in eight step mode and you can see that the track position has the red and green LEDs. On the left, it's now in 16 step mode. So for the first eight steps, you just see the track position with the red LED and the second um, set of steps is for nine to 16, you see with the green. So to program this now, um, red steps are steps one to eight and green steps are nine to 16. So if I want the same sequence um, for the first eight steps and the last eight steps, I just have to do this. You can see it's different because that last step here doesn't have a uh, red. So we'll put that. So we can mix this up. Get some okay. Now you'll notice that the sequence B, the, or output B, is also firing, and. Uh, even though we haven't programmed anything for that because we can't, we can only do um, one 16 step sequence when in this mode. So what's happening is output B instead is giving an inverse of what's programmed on uh, sequence A. So right now, wherever there's uh, a position where there's no step that we've programmed in, then there's something that's gonna fire. So if I clear this, you'll see that the output B is constantly firing because it's doing 16 beats. So because there's nothing there, but if I start to fill this up, so let's do the first eight steps, you'll see nothing for the first eight. And then for the last eight, something fires. It's just a, uh, a simple way of getting more out of um, the limited space. And so to go back to eight step mode, we hold down second last one and now we're back in eight step mode and then of course all the other functionality that was there before like we can set um, different pattern lengths so we get polyrhythms and play the shuffle we can do gate lengths differences That's basically it.